Hi, welcome to my channel. In this lesson, we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 4 Extended Variant 4.3 October November 2019 Question number 4 onwards. Question number 4. The diagram shows a field ABCD on a horizontal ground. There's a vertical post at C. So there's a post here. And from B, the angle of elevation of the top of the post is 19 degrees. Find the height of the post. So this is the height that we need to find. And the angle of elevation is 19 degrees. This is 19 degrees. This will be 90 degrees. So I hope you remember your trigonometry. So these are the rules that you need to know. Now let's see what can be applied here. We have this angle. We want to find the height. So we have the opposite. Let's write down. We have the adjacent. It means we are going to use the tan rule. Therefore, tan 19 is equal to h over adjacent which is 107. 10, 19 multiplied by 107 will give us the height. And that is 36.8 meters. Part B, use the cosine rule to find angle BAC. So this is the angle we are looking at, BAC. So this is the cosine rule. Cos A is equal to P square plus C square minus A square divided by 2 BC. Remember, if you want to find the angle A, the side opposite to it is going to be after the minus. B and C can be either of the sides here. It will be this or this. You just need to remember the formula. It's a very easy four mark question. Therefore, cos A is equal to 158 square plus 132 square minus 107 square 2 multiplied by 158 multiplied by 132 will give us 0 0.7417. If you want to find the angle, we remove the cos to the other side and write it as cos inverse. 0 0.7417. This will give us 42.1. So angle BAC is 42.1. Part C. Use the sine rule to find angle CAD. So we are talking about this angle here, CAD. This is the sine rule. If you want to find the angle sine A over this side is equal to sine B over the opposite side. So let's write the side and these angles. We want angle CAD, so sine angle CAD, or you can just write sine A. What is the side opposite it? Look like this. Opposite is 86. Is equal to, which other angle has been given to us? Sine D, right? So what is sine D? Sine D is 116. So we will write sine 116 and the side opposite it, which is 132. So sine A is equal to sine 116 divided by 132 multiplied by 86. You can either write it as a decimal like I'm showing you now. This will give us 0 0.5857. Write a few more decimals and to find angle like I said we write inverse so sine inverse 0 0.5855 will give us 35.8 degrees next calculate the area of the field so we need to find this area to find the area of the field we'll divide it into two triangles triangle ABC and CAD 
what have we already found? We have found angle BAC in 4B, so that angle is 42.1. And we found now angle 35.8, that is our A. We need to find this angle. How can we find this angle? If two angles are given to us and we want to find the third angle, we subtract from 180 the sum of these two angles. You know that all the three angles when we add equals to 180. So 180 minus 116 minus 35.8 will give us 28.2. Uh, now we are going to use the uh, rule to find the area. Area of a triangle is equal to half times AB sin C. A and B are your side and C is the angle in between the two sides. When do we use this formula? When you do not have a right angle triangle. If it is a right angle, you know we use half times base times height. So let's divide it into two parts. Area 1 and Area 2. And then we add both the areas together. will equal to half AB sin C. So this is the side we are looking at. The included angle and the side. So half times 158 multiply by 132 multiply by sine 42.1. Let's see what answer we get. 6991.2. The second area. What is our included side we are using? We are going to use this. So multiply by 132, multiply by 86, multiply by sine 28.2, giving us 2682.198. So we can round it to 2682.2. Now we want to find the total area, so we are going to add these two areas. That will give us 6991.2 and 2682.2. And we will get 9673.4 square meters. If you have an answer between 9670 to 9676, your answer will be accepted. Part E, the bearing of D from A is 70. So this is 70. And we have to find the bearing of A from C. And this is what we have to find. For that, we need to know this angle. We know that this whole thing is 70. And remember in uh, the previous question, we found out CAD which was 35.8 so this is 35.8 70 minus 35.8 will give us 34.2 now that you can see that this is what we are looking at this we want to find the bearing of uh, A from C we just need to add to uh, 34.2, 180, and we will get 214.2, so that is our bearing. Question number 5, we have been given a cumulative frequency diagram, and it shows the information about the distance, this is the distance, traveled by each of 60 male cyclists in one weekend. Let's read the first question. Use the cumulative frequency diagram to find an estimate of the median. To find the median, we divide the frequency by 2. And that will give us our cumulative frequency. And then we have to find the corresponding distance from the x-axis. So what is our frequency? 60 divided by 2 is 30. That is our cumulative frequency. 
that is here. Now we have to look at the corresponding distance, which is here. And that is 52. Each bar uh, here, small li uh, lines are 2. So 42, 44, 48, 49, 50, 52 kilometer. And then we have to find next the lower quartile. To find the lower quartile, we use the formula one fourth of frequency, and that will give us our cumulative frequency. And then we find our corresponding distance on the x axis. So one fourth of 60 will give us 15. And 15 is here, and the corresponding value is here which is 36 and then we have to find the interquartile range to find the interquartile range we use the formula upper quartile minus lower quartile we already have the lower quartile to find the upper quartile we use 3 fourth of the frequency that will give us our cumulative frequency and then we find our corresponding distance so 3 fourth of 60 will give us 45 45 is here this is 62 so our upper quartile is 62 therefore our interquartile range will be 62 minus 15 uh, sorry, not 15. Our uh, lower quartile was 26. So 62 minus 26, that will give us... Sorry, I got mixed up. Uh, lower quartile was 36. So 62 minus 36 will give us 26. So our interquartile range is 26. For the same weekend, the interquartile range for the distances traveled by a group of Female cyclists is 40 kilometers. Make one comment comparing the distribution of the distance traveled by the males with the distribution of the distances traveled by the females. The males interquartile range was 26 and the female cyclist is 40 kilometers. So the female cyclist distance is more varied. So you can write the distances for female are more varied. Next, a male cyclist cyclist is chosen at random find the probability that he traveled more than 50 kilometers so he traveled more than 50 kilometers 50 is here let's see the corresponding cumulative frequency it's this so this these many people traveled more than 50 kilometers that is 60 minus 27 Now we want to find the probability. So the probability will be 33 over the total number of uh, male cyclists, which is 60. That will give us 11 over 20. D1, use the cumulative frequency diagram to complete this frequency table. So we will write down the cumulative frequency here, starting with 18 and then when it is 50 50 is here right so what is your corresponding frequency you have 27 let's write down that and then when it is 60 we are looking at this these numbers when it is 60 it is 41 when it is 70 we have 53 and when it is 90, we have 58. Now to find these numbers, from the down number, subtract the top number. So 41 minus 27 will give us 14. And 53 minus 41 will give us 12. And 58 minus 53, 5. So this is, uh, we completed the table here. The next part of the question, calculate an estimate of the mean 
traveled. To find the estimate of the mean traveled in a group data, we use this rule. The sum of f of x over n. Now what is f and x and n? x is the midpoint of the class width. So this is uh, 0, 040. We need to find the midpoint of this. f is the frequency which is here and n is the total frequency, the sum of all these frequencies. So let's find the midpoint. How do we find the midpoint? We add these two numbers and divide by 2. So 0 plus 40 divided by 2 will be 20. 40 plus 50 divided by 2, 45. So these are the midpoints. And now we need to find the multiplication. Multiply this by the frequency. So 20 multiplied by 18. And we are going to find the sum after we write it down. Now we are going to add all of these numbers together and that will give us 2925 and this frequency is 60. To find the mean, we are going to write the sum 2925 divided by 60, giving us 48.75, so that's our mean. Question number six, this is a circle theorem question. We have been given that in the diagram, A, B, C, D lie on the circle center O. Uh, this means that A, B, C, D, all the four vertices are touching the circle. It's a cyclic quadrilateral. And angle A, D, C has been given to us. Angle A, C, D has been given to us. And angle B, C, O has been given to us. Show that obtuse angle A, O, C is equal to 104. Give a reason for each step of your working. There are two angles involved here. AOC could be this angle or it could be this angle. This is a reflex angle. We are not interested in this angle. We are interested in the inside angle. There's a rule that if it's a cyclic quadrilateral, the opposite angles equal to 180. So, Angle AB will equal to 180, angle BD will equal to 180. Therefore, angle ABC will equal to 180 minus 128, which is 52. So this angle here is 52. And the reason behind it, because they said that you have to give a reason for each step of your working, angles in a cyclic quadrilateral equal 180. The other rule that we have is this angle here is twice the angle at the circumference. So the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. So what is angle AOC equal to? Angle AOC will be equal to 52 multiplied by 2, which is 104. And the reason write down, angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. Next, find angle BAO. BAO, we need to find this angle here. We know that this is a radius and this is a radius because O is the center. So if two sides are equal, it means it's an isosceles triangle and the opposite angles will also be equal. To find these angles, we are going to subtract from 180, 104 and the answer divided by 2. That will give us 38. So this angle is 38. And this angle is 38. When you add all the angles, when you add 38 and 38 plus 30 plus 52 plus angle BAO, the total is equal to 180 as the sum angles is equal to 180. 
you have all the angles except BAO. So to find angle BAO from 360, subtract all the other angles. 38 plus 38 plus 30 plus 52. And that will give us 22. So angle BAO is 22. Next, find angle B ABD. So now we are looking at this angle here, ABD, only this part, not the whole angle. Okay, let's see what we have now here. If you see carefully, you will see that angle DCA and angle DBA, they originate from the same segment. And when that is the case, this is the rule that angles in the same segment from a common chord are equal. So this is equal to this. You can see here that this is 28. So if an angle ABD is going to be 28. Circle theorems are a little bit tricky, but you need to practice quite often and then you will get the hang of it. Write down all the theorems on a paper two, three times, understand it, memorize it, because it's a very common question. Part four, the radius OC is 9.6 centimeter. Calculate the total perimeter of the sector OADC. So we want to find this. Perimeter means the outside part this perimeter. We know that this is 9.6 and this is 9.6. So 9.6 plus 9.6. To find this, this is called the arc length. We use the formula. This is the formula we use to find the arc length. Theta over 360 multiplied by 2 pi r. Theta is our angle and if you remember our angle AOC is 104. So 104 over 360 multiplied by 2, multiplied by pi, multiplied by our radius, which is 9.6. Put this in the calculator. Will give us 36.6 centimeter. Part B, this is a similar shape question. We have been given two mathematically similar solid metal prisms. The volume of the smaller prism is 648 cubic centimeter and the volume of the larger prism is 2187. The area of the cross section of the smaller prism is 36. We have to find the area of the cross section of the larger prism. For these type of questions, I prefer that you find your scale factor first before we move forward. So 648 multiply by your scale factor. You can write your scale factor as K, R, whatever you want to write it, or write it as scale factor, it's fine. Cube it will give you 2187. Why do we cube it? Because it is volume. If it was length, it will be K. If it was area, it will be K square. So K cube is equal to 2187 over 648. Therefore, K is equal to 2187, 648. This is a cube, so we write cube root. You can either write it like this, or you can write it like this, whichever way you understand. And that will give us 1.5. So our scale factor is 1.5. Now we have area 36. Our area multiplied by the scale factor square will give us the area of the larger prism. So in place of k, we are going to substitute 1.5. Square it and that will give you 81. So the answer is 81 square centimeter. Part 2. The larger prism is melted down into a sphere. This is the volume of the larger sphere. Calculate the radius of the sphere and the formula for the volume of the sphere is given. The volume is going to remain the same, whether it is a prism or a sphere. So let's write down in place of volume, 
sorry about that 2187 is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cube sometimes it's easier if you change here the formula and make r the subject so v multiplied by 3 over 4 pi is equal to r cube you want to find the r and you have been given q so you can write 3v over 4 pi cube root is equal to r this makes it easier and now you substitute the values that you have you have been given the volume so we can just start that way 3 multiplied by 2 1 8 7 divided by 4 pi cube root will give us our r and the whole thing you put in the calculator you will get 8.05 centimeter so whenever you want to find something now make that variable your subject this brings us to the end of uh, this video for uh, question number six uh, seven onwards please watch the part three and do subscribe to my channel like the video if i've helped you and share it with your friends thank you for watching